spikes, spikes, and some more spikes. But if you're just getting started in athletic and you're not sure which spikes you need, this video is for you. Hi guys, and welcome back to Fit With Tea. I hope you guys are good. So today I'm talking about track spikes and I'm gonna specifically talk about sprint spikes today. And so if you've ever been to a shop or you look for spikes online, you would have seen different types. Different events have different shoes or spikes depending on what the event is. For example, jumpers have their own spike and they tend to have a bit more cushion around the whole of the bottom of the foot at the heel because as you think about it, especially like triple jump, they've got to hop, step and jump. It has a lot of high impact. Same for high jumpers and long jumps. Even if you are a cross country athlete, there are also spikes for cross country. Those spikes are generally designed to be able to use them outdoors over all the different types of terrain and they're a little bit more bulky, a bit more shoe-like than track spikes okay let me show you two different spikes that i have so here i've got a long distance spike here and i've got a sprint spike here as an example so just to show you guys and i'm going to explain the difference here so that you can actually see and get used to it mind the bottom these are really old i've had these ones probably a decade to be honest with you i use them for training i'm going to speak about that as well having training spike breaking in spike i'm going to speak about those things as well so stay tuned so as you can see this spike has a hard plate it has its spike at the front of the foot and it has no heel okay this spike is a long distance spike and the difference as you can see there is a heel and it runs across there's also spike pins at the front of the foot but there are less spike pins than there are in this sprint spike and with this sprint spike this one has a hard plate Whereas we can see with this one, it is a lot more flexible, okay? And so you do get some sprint spikes or more so like middle distance spikes that have a little hill. And again, they're more flexible, not as flexible as this one, but they are more flexible than one with a hard plate. And the reason that sprint spikes have this kind of structure with no heel is because how does a sprinter want to run? We want to run on the ball of our foot, don't we? We want to be in this position when we strike the ground. We want to be able to get good grip, good traction, and propel off the ground as quickly as possible and have as little ground contact time as possible. Now you do get some sprint spike where you have more of a bridge and again that means more stiffness, a higher hill. So the bigger the bridge here or the arch, this part here, enables you to be higher on your foot and the higher you are on your foot and the stiffer it is, it helps you to stay in that position as you hit the ground bring off the ground and keeping your foot stiff. Some athletes maybe doing a 400 might want it to be a little bit more flexible than maybe those doing 100 or 200 or even some 800 meter runners might want to have a sprint bike with no heel but that actually provides a little bit more flexibility So not as much as this. It's not as rigid as this one with a hard plate but you can get some of a softer plate and that might be a good place to start especially if you are a new sprinter because your foot has to get used to this so let's talk about breaking in your spikes and i don't mean breaking your spikes girl i mean wearing them in okay so if you get new spikes particularly if you do get new rigid sprint spikes you definitely want to make sure that you wear them in before you compete in them okay you don't want any surprises when you come to your competition you want to make sure that you have got your achilles your feet ready used to the new impact the new positioning because when your foot is in that rigid position it does put a lot of stress tension on your achilles on your feet on the front half of your foot and so you want to make sure that you have at least tried them out in a few sessions before you go to compete so that your foot gets used to it so that your body gets used to the new impact and especially as a sprinter you know when it comes into the season where you start doing a lot more speed work and you're running a lot in spike that can usually be the time when injuries start to take place when Achilles starts to play up because of the new load sprinting is you know very high intensity very high impact and it does put a lot of pressure on your achilles on your feet and so if you haven't checked out my video about how to get faster <laughs> check that video out when you do have new spikes and you are planning to wear them in competition make sure you break them in wear them in just like you do with new shoes so that your feet get used to it so we've spoken about the difference between a middle distance spike and a long distance spike a sprint spike generally has more pins in it got more here and you've got even one here. Now, me personally, in this spike, I've actually put all of them in, but I have some spikes where I haven't liked having this one. I found it awkward, it feels weird on my foot. And so as a sprinter, you might find that there's some spikes that you don't like where it feels the spike pin, so you might not put it in. And sometimes they give you a flat pin, which is an example of one here, where it's flat, you see that? And you can put that in to replace the actual pins itself one of the negatives of sprint spikes is they do wear out quickly in relative to how many how often you're using them but they also do 
wear down so as you can see on my long distance bike these are very very blunt but these are removable and they have to be replaced so if i show you guys this is a spike key and this is what it looks like they can look different but generally speaking it's the same structure as you can see that hole fits perfectly onto here and you can unscrew them okay so it can unscrew like so and this is what it looks like that is a pyramid style pin you can also get some that kind of look like a christmas tree but yes these pins do wear down and so you will have to replace them you will not be able to keep the same spike pins that you get in your new spike packet guys forever you will eventually have to replace them so you take them in and out well you don't do it every time but when they get blunt you will take them out now you want to make sure that they're secure because if they're loose one of the worst and annoying things is you just completed a run and you look at your spike and you realize there's one missing because you didn't put it in tight enough so make sure when you first put them in that you do it tightly tighten them and obviously when you go to competition make sure you've got nice fresh pins now the length that you want as a sprinter is six millimeters okay that's the length that is allowable in competition so six millimeter spike is what you have for most track spikes anyway and like i said in the packet you usually do get these blunt ones and the reason for the blunt ones is to put it in the place where you don't want a spike pin okay but if you don't need to use the blunt one don't use it so why do i as a sprinter have long distance spikes and why might you as a new athlete as a young athlete why might getting long distance spikes be a good idea for you to begin with now at the time like i mentioned i've had these i think for about a decade at this point but i was really suffering with stress fractures in my feet the little bones at the ball of your foot i also suffered with achilles issues and so when you have the full heel it puts less stress on your achilles less stress on your the ball of your foot there's more cushioning isn't there so having these for training i didn't compete in them I, there is a time when elaine thompson ran in long distance spikes everyone was saying oh she ran in trainers she ran in trainers but it was these kind of spikes that she ran in which enabled her to protect her Achilles a bit more because of the cushioning the fact that there's spikes on it means it's better than running in trainers but of course a sprint spike is going to be the best option for sprints but you may have different issues and so to still be able to get some kind of grip and some kind of traction then having these kind of spikes if you are somebody who has suffered with any kind of injury then that way can be useful in training so it's you know when it's wet when you want to do speed but you don't want to wear trainers then having spikes like this in your training bag can be very very useful for you and again if you're a young sprinter a new sprinter and you're not looking to fork out on a different type of spike or shoe for every event that you're going to be trying then having one pair of spikes like this or even the middle distance you know with a smaller heel but more sprint style like can be good too you can still jump in them you can still run in them you know it's not necessarily the optimal thing but it's still useful it still works and so that might be a good option to start with and at the end of the day guys in all these things that i'm saying it's just a guideline it's just guidance apart from the fact that you definitely need to have six millimeter spike on the track everything else is according to you and what feels good for you and what you like you know the size of your spike generally speaking spikes are designed to fit quite snug but if you're someone who just wants a little bit more space then think about maybe half a size up or if you want to wear insoles like I had to use to wear insoles in my spike then that might be you and again you have options as to whether you want to wear socks or no sock barefoot gang or sock gang I am sock gang hashtag sock gang in the spike I'm not the barefoot gang at all put it in the comments guys which side are you on are you barefoot gang or are you socks gang when it comes to spike so guys that is the video let me know in the comment section below did you find it useful did you learn anything new and let me know what spikes are you starting with or what were your first spikes you ever had but if you like the video guys please give it a big thumbs up to help me accelerate my channel let the algorithm know so that more people can see this video and if you haven't yet checked out it's so annoying and if you haven't yet checked out oh my god and if you haven't yet checked out my video where i talk about race day tips for sprinters make sure to check it out here and i will see you guys next friday bye guys